Okay, great. We're back uh, again with Kevin Templin. He's the integration manager for the uh, Space Shuttle Programs Transition and Retirement Office. Uh, once again, Kevin, thanks again for taking time out and thanks joining us. Me. And we'll we'll pick pick back up a little bit. We covered a lot of, uh, of course, there's thousands of components coming off the vehicle to preserve and that type of thing. Do, do you know if the engineering community has learned anything yet? Have you heard anything from, uh, I guess they're, they're called the STS LAST, that, that kind of group? That was kind of an internal name we gave them, kind of a mission uh, name. But it's it's it just, you know, the, the whole idea with that was retention of hardware for either uh, further engineering uh, uh, knowledge, skill development type of thing, or future use. Yeah, there, there's some thought that some of these parts might actually have some uses on some smaller projects or, you know, as we've mentioned, even larger ones like SLS. So uh, they really haven't had time. Uh, we just finished processing Discovery, and uh, the other two vehicles, Atlantis and, and Endeavor, that are done at KSC are, are still undergoing uh, right. the work to remove some of this hardware and, and, and get it ready for display. So the hardware is still being shipped out. Um, so. If any of the work's done, it's been very little, uh, and and that's really more future work for the engineering community. All right. Well, you know, obviously it's it's painful anytime you retire an operational vehicle to move on to you know the future programs that NASA's working on. But uh, you know these these orbiters uh, discovery, of course, being delivered first. But uh, these orbiters still have a mission, you know, an yes, educational mission, um, an opportunity for people to see them that that never have. And you've you've kind of been involved going around to these uh, sites mm -hmm. where we're going to deliver them. Um, is that the message you're getting from those museum folks when you have been meeting with it them? It is. It is. Uh, d they're actually uh, working together in some respects to try and make their displays complementary. And so, um, if you'll when you see them in their final uh, display sites, uh, you're going to see things like at Air and Space Museum, they'll have the vehicle on it, wait on wheels as if it's the uh, roll to a stop at the end of a mission right. on a runway. Um, the Intrepid Sea Air and Space Museum intends to take Enterprise and, and put it in dis on display as if it were on final approach. So you have one landing. Um, it, then uh, Kennedy Space Center, which will have Atlantis, is has a display uh, design that would show the vehicle with payload bay doors open as if it's on on orbit during the mission, and then the California Science Center has a pretty ambitious plan to try and mount Endeavor in the vertical as if it's ready to launch. So, wow, so that is th all three different phases. Very of very different phases, display. right? Very interesting. Um, well, let's move on now. We're of course we're getting ready for Discovery's uh, trip to mm -hmm. final trip to uh, its home uh, at the Air and Space Museum. Right. And I know you guys have had a ton of meetings, and uh, of course you've just had had a meeting to sort of set the stage for the for the ferry flight, right? How did, how did that go? It went really well. Uh, it was orbiter rollout review, which the, the program's had many rollout reviews over, over the, the, you know, the course of the, the life of the program. This one's a little different because of the things we've already mentioned here. The, the, the configuration of the vehicles in is different. Um, these rollout reviews are always held to make sure that uh, the work we said we had to do at the beginning of the processing flow was actually accomplished and anything we ran into in between was, was solved appropriately. Uh, this one went very smoothly. Um, it's, uh, like you said, a little bit bittersweet. It's a big milestone. This vehicle is about ready to be backed out of the uh, orbiter processing facility and its next uh, yeah, big milestone is to a, ferry. We have a photo, we do. Of, we have uh, a photo here of uh, Discovery. Yeah, there you go. You kind of see it from the, the end there, but you see the tail cones installed. So uh, if things were going well, uh, uh, well, things did go very well. We're going to roll the vehicle over to the vehicle assembly building and store it there until mid-April when we're ready to ferry off to the Air and Space Museum. So this vehicle is, is buttoned up and ready for display, basically. Right. So, of course, Discovery going to the uh, Air and Space Museum outside Washington, D.C., and then, uh, of course, and we're going to pick up Enterprise, which has been there been there for a while. Right. And this uh, one's kind of unique because we delivered Enterprise to the Air and Space Museum in 1985, and it's been in their possession since then. And uh, so we're going to end up picking up a vehicle from a non-NASA facility and ferrying it off to its uh, its. And there's your site. picture that shows it under crane. That, that, that that's one thing you wanted I wanted you to touch on is mm -hmm. is we don't have the the uh, permanent mate demate devices that are located in California right. and Florida, and so we have to. And do a unique operation for we definitely right. do. We uh, it, people are used to seeing the mate demate device at the Kennedy Space Center or even the one out at, at Dryden, 
uh, Flight Research Center where we sometimes land at the end of mission and, and it makes it very easy for us relative, right? Everything is relative. Uh, easy for us to, to mate the vehicles up and to offload the vehicles when we need to do that at those sites. But the sites we're going to do, do not have these facilities. So we actually have a contingency set of, of hardware if we ever needed to do a transatlantic okay. abort, that sort of thing, that we could use this hardware to uh, load up the orbiters on the carrier aircraft and bring it back to the Kennedy Space Center. We've used the hardware before, uh, but it's been a long time. The last time we actually used that hardware was when we delivered Enterprise uh, to the Air and Space Museum in 1985. So we've had some dress rehearsals with the hardware down at the Kennedy Space Center, make sure that procedures, we understand them, we know how to operate this. And we'll be using this hardware at every one of the sites we ferry a vehicle to. So when we go to Dulles, we'll have this hardware erected to offload Discovery, and then we will le have it in place to load up Enterprise. And we'll have to take all that ground support equipment down send it up to the uh, the uh, uh, to JFK International in New York, put it back together to offload Enterprise, all right. and we'll send it all out to California to LAX and do the same thing to offload Endeavor out there. So this picture, I think, was actually from uh, uh, an offload that we did in 1984 at Mobile for the World's Fair. Oh, that, yeah, that's right. That's uh, when we took Enterprise out there. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Um, uh, you know, it's a lot of work that's uh, going on to get these vehicles ready. Uh, it's it's almost like processing for a for a flight, and of course, it is an operational mission to to get them to their uh, right. final display sites at all of these museums. It so definitely has, has that feel of operations, even though the the end end game here is a little different than a than a you know ascent to orbit. Um, it it we're uh, operating under the same sort of rules and, and procedures so all right what, what, what's next for you when this is all when this this all wraps up probably toward the end of the year or I've had so. that question a lot and to be honest with you with so much activity right now I haven't had a lot of time to focus on that but uh, the agency has a lot of things going on going forward from you know space shuttle the station is up and operational and we have the Orion uh, space capsule being developed here at the Johnson Space Center and then the space launch system so a lot of things I can go look at I'm not sh not sure what I'll where I'll end up landing in the end but uh, I'll need to start focusing on that probably this summer after we get a couple of these ferries under our belt. Yeah. Well, uh, we really appreciate you stopping by, Kevin, to, to kind of give us an update on uh, all the activity that's been going on with the orbiters as they uh, wind up their service, obviously, and head out to all the museums. Uh, Kevin Templin, the uh, integration manager for the Space Shuttle Program's uh, Transition and Retirement Office. Uh, again, Kevin, thanks a lot for stopping by. Thank you for having me.